Hello everyone, so it is time for another video uh, of Own Me OG Strategy Guides and we have once again another wonderful team from NCC. This one is a 32nd Orochi Stage 10 team. This team is very reliable, works 100% of the time, and nearly always uh, will succeed. So let's go ahead and get into the specifics of how this particular team runs and how you are going to be able to make something like this. This is an in-game build, so it will take a lot of work to be able to make this happen. A team like this is not going to be for everyone. This is something that you want to make sure that you're building up to and it will take time. It will take some pretty significant souls, uh, but it's a pretty interesting team and is very reliable. So again, uh, it's going to take some work. So, But let's go through this. The first person who's going to move in your turn order is going to be your Kamakui, as you just saw there. He's going to be used to actually knock down damage and create a health pool for showing which is the lowest HP Shikigami. In this case, in this wave, it's going to be Kusa. Kusa is then going to be targeted by the AI of Ibaraki, and then Ibaraki is going to one-shot this wave. You will need to have an Ibaraki that is capable of one-shotting both Stage 1 and Stage 2. Uh, and then for Round 3, it's going to become a little more interesting, and this is where it gets into being reliable. So you do your normal team, it's going to show, it's going to pull up uh, that the lowest health uh, ratio monsters are going to be the Utangus. So Ibaraki is going to target him. This is where it gets very important. If you notice, you have just enough HP left on Orochi that Orochi actually has a 70 over 70% 70 ratio. And this is very, very important that you don't do so much damage that you break this. And we're going to take a look right now because the next person to go after Kam after Kamakui, Ibaraki, and Saimai go, is going to be your Ushi no Toki. And Ushi no Toki is going to be very important for that decoy doll. Because the decoy doll has the highest HP ratio at 100%, Hakuro is going to target that doll first. Hakuro and Ushi no Toki are both on shadow, so take a look at what happens when you strike the doll. Both both shadow sets will go off over the heads of Ushi no Toki and Kagero. So the strike goes in. And if you look, both sets activated. So this is very important part of this build. Hakuro is going to be attacking a target that is over 70% and therefore getting the damage boost of 40% extra damage from shadow. But then, because... Ushinotoki also has Shadow. The damage she transfers from the doll to Orochi is also amplified. And I believe with my calculations, I saw that it was about 1.98% when you amplify the 1.4 times the 1.4. So you're getting a huge damage boost, and this absolutely is required to time out correctly. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble if you want your team to be one-shotting Orochi. So let's go ahead and move over and take a look at the stats. So in this particular section, NCC is showing off the stats on his particular monsters he's using. The important thing to notice here is that Yushino Toki requires very, very little. She just needs to be on a shadow set, and she needs to go before Hakuro, but after Ibaraki. So it's very easy. You just need to make sure that that happens. Looking at the speed here... Yushino Toki is at a 119 speed. If I remember correctly, and we'll see this shortly, his Hakuro is at 117. So this is perfectly fine. Nothing else is needed. You're simply using her for her decoy skill. Your fodder Zashiki is capable of just making sure you have a second one. You know, you don't have to have a fully skilled one. Uh, the main thing you have to make sure you're skilling up here is her skill too which is the one that provides the orbs at the start of battle. The minimum there is that it must be at, at a second level up, so it has to be at 1, 2, 1 at a minimum. Uh, on top of that, you then have a uh, Azure Basin set, as you would expect. And finally, the most important thing is that she has to absolutely go last, so she takes up no animation frames. Again, you have to have her go last. This is absolutely necessary if you want to make this reliably a 
30 second run. So super critical. Uh, let's go over to the next one. This is where things get tough. Kamakui is going to be required to be at G6. In addition to that, you need very good rolls on your shadow set. As you've noticed, this is a very shadow set intensive build, so you are going to want to start collecting as many shadow sets as you can. What's particularly tough about Kamakui is that you are going to need him to have a very high attack, somewhere in the area of about six to 7,000. Uh, it's going to have to be something you play around with over time, but that is what you're going to want to need to do. In addition to that, and this is where it gets really, really tough, because in order to get these kind of stats, you're needing to run attack, attack, crit rate. And in order to do that, that means you are not running speed, but because he is your uh, attack bar pushback for the rest of stage 10, you need to have him at a very high speed fast enough to go before everyone. Because of this, that means that he is going to be running at a very high speed. I believe the minimum on this is going to have to be 161 to 63. I'm not 100% sure on exactly what that number is, but um, in this case, he does surpass that. But this means that he is basically making sure that he is running speed on all of his souls and some of your you're gonna to have to get some great speed rolls on your souls and this is why this is an in-game build because in addition to having a high speed and a high attack rate uh, attack power you're going to need to have a hundred percent crit rate he has a very small amount of waste here in that he could reduce some of the crit rate to go to something else but for his particular build he's actually measured everything up just about right so that it is going to work every single time so it is very tough here, and if I remember correctly, he is about to show off uh, the the actual soul that got him most of his speed, which I believe is on slot 5 there. The slot 5 soul happened to roll plus 16. Uh, okay, so there is his slot 2. It was a plus 11 speed, so again, this is very intensive. And right here we have a slot 4 soul, which again, it doesn't have to have a ton on it, but you do need to make sure you have a lot of speed. And that's the real problem with this. This is where it's going to be very tough for most people to get. Is you're using very high speed souls on a unit that has essentially has this one function. But if you can get a high amount of attack power, a high amount of speed on here, and a high amount of crit, you can make this work. You don't have to worry about crit damage because you're going to be going into primarily those three slots. So this is going to be what you need to actually use to make Kamakui work. He's one of the tougher ones to actually build out in this entire build. So uh, good luck because this is going to be your challenge right here. Now we have Ibaraki to look at. This is a standard build that you would expect at a minimum to see anyone in the high end game of S10 running. And uh, he has a decent enough attack on there. About 7,000 attack. A high enough speed to put him just after... Uh, just after Saimai goes, but before everyone else goes. A 100% crit rate. You want to make sure this is very reliable. One of the things he actually brought up is that you actually want to do 101% because the system is weird and 100% can actually be read as 99.9% .9%, he believes. And if that's the case, some of your runs might fail. So 101 would actually be the most optimal crit rate. And then it has to be a crit damage Ibaraki in order to be enough damage in order to do it so again this if you're able to be at the point where you can outfit kamakui like he was you should also be able to outfit an ibaraki like this and if you can do that then you will have enough punch through to be able to actually do the amount of damage you need to do the final member of the team is hakuro hakuro will not be terribly difficult to soul out uh, you want to make sure that she is going at least fast enough to be able to um, keep up with the rest of the team. Uh, again, she wants to be the last one you have actually attacking with the Zashiki going after her. The main thing we're going for is skill 3, which is going to do a bunch of the damage. However, the main thing to think about here with this is that it is going to have a 30% crit rate bonus. That means that the minimum... Uh, that you have to hit for crit rate instead of 100% is 70%. Uh, 
So you can do that pretty easily, and which means that you can ruin her as crit damage and make sure you give her the proper attack, attack, crit damage souls. Now that you have had a chance to actually see how this team is sold up, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple runs now that you know what you're looking for. So Kamakui is doing the damage in order to make sure that there's a clear unit that has the least amount of HP, and that's the one that you want uh, Ibaraki to be striking. None of the first two stages should have that much HP, so you shouldn't have a problem here. From there, the Utangus are going to show up as being the least damaged, and again, Ibaraki is going to be able to punch through, do quite a bit of damage. The Ushinotoki sets a doll, Hakaru goes through, and they both shoot. Again, in both of those situations, the, the Orochi needs to be at 70% for the doll to take the bonus increase from Shadow Set, and then the other, um, the Orochi, to take the additional shadow damage from the doll. So, again, one more time here. Kamakui. I guess I forgot to mention Saimai. Ibaraki to clear him out, and it'll happen every time this way. Kamakui, Saimai, with Star, and Ibaraki. First two waves are cake. There's no issue with this. This is easy. So, Ibaraki clears out your Tingus. If you notice, he switched to the left one. It's a random one. Each time, though, main thing is that he gets it in there, and it uh, and it kills the Otangus. The doll is always going to be put on Orochi then, and uh, if the Orochi is over 70% health, he will be killed in one shot from Hakuro's bow. So, that's going to be it for this. It's a pretty quick one. I know some of you have been saying that some of these videos go a little long, so I wanted to make this real quick. I didn't even do a face cam for this one. I wanted to be able to run through it and just knock it out as fast as possible. I appreciate the feedback that everyone's been giving me to help the channel grow and get better. I want to continue to making sure I'm giving you guys the best content I can. I want to say thank you to NCC for giving me such a great team build to be able to show off to everyone. If you have a team build for something you would like to show off, I would be happy to showcase it for you and give you all the credit for it because these people are doing a lot of the real work and simply allowing me to showcase it, and I, I greatly appreciate that. It's an honor. So if you like this video, please give it a like. If you do not, give it a dislike. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and please subscribe. Thank you very much for stopping by. You guys have a great day. Peace.